we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. I mean, whatever happened to that old conservative discipline about paying for what you spend? I'm up for re-election this year, and I'm going to remind everybody what I did at home, which is going to cost me politically. I, when I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Because for the last 40 years, as early as 1984 and as recently as 2018, Joe Biden has been advocating for a cut in Social Security. And this was pointed out by a phenomenal article in The Intercept by Ryan Grimm. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I regard it as an outrage that more and more pressure is being placed on the Bureau of Labor Statistics to change their approach in determining how the Consumer Price Index, the CPI, is being determined with the goal of lowering it. Frankly, this is nothing more than a cheap backdoor way to balancing the budget on the backs of the elderly by cuts in Social Security by not giving them an increase which honestly reflects the rate of inflation. In the state of Vermont, in my view, not only is the current CPI not too high, it is too low. Elderly people are more dependent upon health care and prescription drugs than the general population, and the cost of health care is rising much faster than the general rate of inflation. Mr. Speaker, in Vermont and throughout this country, millions of elderly people are trying to survive on seven or eight thousand dollars a year. Let us not cut their Social Security checks and make their lives even more difficult. Let us move toward a balanced budget. But let us not do it on the backs of the weakest and most vulnerable Americans, including our senior citizens. So for all of us who understand that Social Security is life and death for tens of millions of Americans today and will be vitally important for working people as they reach retirement age, that we understand that Social Security has done a great job. You know, Mr. President, a few minutes ago you were on the floor talking about the strong work that our federal employees do, and you're absolutely right. Sometimes we also take for granted that Social Security has been an enormous success. It has done exactly what those people who created it wanted it to do. Nothing more, nothing less. It succeeded. It has taken millions and millions of seniors out of poverty, given them an element of security. It has also helped people with disabilities maintain their dis dignity, Widows and orphans are also getting help. For 75 years, it has worked well. It has a $2.6 trillion surplus today, and it can pay out benefits for the next 29 years. It is strong. We want to make it stronger. This payroll tax holiday, I'm afraid, is a step very much in the wrong direction, and that is one of the important reasons why this agreement between the President and the Republicans uh, should be defeated.